Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic is very, very important on the path to begin to get a sense of. It really is, because in many places as we go forth and study A Course in Miracles, we find how different it is from the way that we've been conditioned and raised. Indeed it is. It's 180 degrees the opposite of how we've been conditioned and raised. What else would you possibly expect? I mean, if legitimately you're expecting something else, well then, you'll be disappointed. If, however, you want the peace of God and you want to wake up, and you do as the Holy Spirit guides you and instructs you to do, you won't be disappointed at all. So with that backdrop, welcome. You're still watching and there's a reason why. In fact, in each and every video, there are bound to be multiple reasons why. In other words, there's a message for you from the Holy Spirit. What exactly that will be, I have absolutely no idea. But you'll know when you hear it. And that's pretty much the way that works. So, A Course in Miracles is very different from the way we've been conditioned and brought up and trained here in the world. This entire world rests on the single premise of separation, of a perceived, supposed separation from God, which we then re-enact by appearing to be separate from all of the other life forms on this planet. We take this frail and fragile device to be our designated home, and we appear to be stuck within it. Yet, knowing deep down that's really not the case at all. Which begs the immediate question, what do I do about it? Help. Great question. Ask your inner teacher for guidance. He's the one that's speaking to you today. There are many areas of A Course in Miracles, many different ideas or topics where we can see this stark contrast between the way we've been conditioned and the way things really are. Today, we're going to take a look at the special relationship and especially the coveted and vaunted worshipped and adored, valued over all else, special love relationship. Yeah, that special love of yours. This is an area where we see a clear difference in the thought system of the Holy Spirit and the thought system of the ego the way we were conditioned to think we're an individual self-sustaining survival unit doing pitch battle with all our brothers and sisters, going to war against them, whether we declare it or not, seeing them as opposites to us, as our competition out to get what we perceive to be extraordinarily limited and scarce resources. So we must grab and steal and compete for them always, always with an opponent. 
That's the ego. So what does that produce but confusion? It's what has us on the spiritual path. It's what has you on the spiritual path because you want out. At some point, you have acknowledged that. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you had to be consciously aware of it either at the time, but you have heard the call of our inner teacher to awaken. So what is a special relationship? It's an exclusive relationship. Here in the world, we form them all the time. We form special love relationships and special hate relationships. A special hate relationship is one where we reserve some disdain for somebody or something, a political party, for example. And we love on everyone else and reserve our little hatred for these guys. Because did you hear that bill that they're proposing? Did you hear their platform and what they want to do if they get elected? What the actual, right? That, that sort of thing. We form these judgments all of the time, all of them predicated on the fundamental mistake of separation. There is no separation of any kind. So thinking that we're separate, we also are highly attracted to what we call here in study and practice of A Course in Miracles, special love relationships, like that romantic partnership. Yeah a special love relationship. So we'll say plenty of words about how to use your special love relationship should you be in one. And many of us are, I am. So take this from the standpoint of someone who's very happily married. But let's look at how the ego uses our special love relationship and evaluate it differently. I'll tell you more in a few minutes about how we do that, and we do that unequivocally and certainly. The special love relationship is the ego's chief device for keeping us from heaven. It is. It's the ego's chief weapon for keeping us stuck. How could that be? Because we value it so much? Well, that's exactly why. And here's how that all works. Think of our popular culture and our popular music. For example, this is a shining crystal clear example that almost every song at all, is about love. And in fact, almost every song that's about love is not about the abstract union of all things, perfect oneness, the love of God. It's not about that. It's about a special relationship, an exclusive special relationship. Either we're seeking that or we have it and we're delighted, but there are problems, which we'll talk about in a minute, or we've lost a special relationship and we find ourselves with all of our brothers and sisters at the bar drinking our sorrows away because so-and-so did us wrong and up and left us and we don't know what to do. Yeah, why well, keep going? That's what I feel like. I've lost love. You can't lose love. You can lose an exclusive relationship, but you cannot lose love. So in this backdrop, we're encouraged to pursue a special love relationship. And we're made, conditioned and made, to feel very badly if we don't have one, right? And we can always, of course, look around and see people that don't operate this way. There are always examples, but this is the way that we've been conditioned. So most of us kind of find ourselves here 
We do. It's where we appear to find ourselves. So in the special love relationship, it is an ego device because it is exclusive. This is not an advocation for open marriage or polyamory or anything like that. If you're into that, great. If you're not, great. I'm not into it. Maybe you're not either. But if you are, so what? That's not what we're talking about here. Remember, this course is not about affecting change on the level of form in any way, shape, or form, even. It's not about affecting change in the world out there. It's about changing our mind. So how does the ego use our special relationships? Well, they're exclusive by definition, most of them. They're exclusive. It, which should tell you everything you need to know about how the ego uses them. Within this exclusive relationship, which we perceive oftentimes to be the goal of all life, hatred can enter, can't it? We have fights with our partner. If your exclusive relationship is with a business partnership, well, business partnerships are well known for blowing up sometimes because someone's ego gets in the way. It's exclusive. Love is not exclusive. Therefore, a special love relationship is not really based on love at all, but the illusion, illusion of love. Why illusion? Because it's exclusive. Not saying that you don't feel love for your partner if you're in a romantic relationship or married or whatever the case may be. I certainly love my wife, which you can do full well knowing how the ego uses it. You give it over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes. This is the difference. Ego purpose, pain and suffering, frustration, Give your intimate relationship over to the Holy Spirit, on the other hand, for the purposes of healing the mind. He will not deprive you of the relationship. You don't have to leave it just because the ego can use it. Well, let the Holy Spirit use it instead and see it transform and be really, truly loving. How about that? Try it. You might like it. Let's put a stop to this all too common mentality in the spiritual community, in spiritual practice of oh, this so and so, this isn't really spiritual. I can't have this. I can't have money. Of course you can. And maybe you're really wealthy right now. No problem, right? I can't have love. I can't have anything good. I can't have anything nice, special because, well, it, it, it's just not spiritual. Oh, rubbish. Give everything over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes. That's what we do. You, if you have lots of money, continue to have lots of money. If you have a job where you make lots of money, keep at it. Just give it over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes. If you are in a happy marriage, as I am, give that marriage over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes. The ego will willingly take and use your relationships for its own purposes of exclusion, exclusion and separation. So it's not saying don't keep these structures. If you're in a monogamous relationship, keep a monogamous relationship, right? Nobody's saying make drastic changes on the level of form. We don't have to do that. That is unnecessary. We look past the level of form completely. What form? What body? 
Indeed, what world? Hmm. Give your special relationships over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes. Try it. Try it. You might really, really be happy that you did. It's the big difference here in the ego's interpretation of love and, and the Holy Spirit's is the Holy Spirit knows that love is union and then the extension of that union. To the ego, love and what it deems success in love is about triumph. It's a victory over somebody or something. We may hook up with somebody that we deem to be the love of our life, which we view as a triumph of love, a, a personal triumph over adversity or over a series of bad dating experiences, perhaps an abusive relationship in the past. You know? We see it as a triumph and a victory. There is no triumph of love because love has no opponent. So in order to have a victory, you have to have a separation. Because it's a victory over. In this artificial, artificial construction, there's an opponent. Even if the opponent is not a person, but the idea of loneliness, the idea of ending up spending every night wasting your money at the bar and commiserating with your other fellow lonely people. The basis of a country song, I don't know, yeah, or a popular music song about breakups, because, well, we don't have to go far to listen to one of those, do we? And this culture is obsessed with love, but goes about it the wrong way. And by this culture, I mean global culture. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. This plays out. So give it over to the Holy Spirit. And, and if you're not in a special love relationship, give your entire experience over to the Holy Spirit anyway. I'm not saying don't seek a romantic partner. What tends to happen is when we stop obsessing about it, <laughs> that's when it happens. <laughs> Isn't that the case? You know, that's a classic example of what we're talking about here with this course and spirituality in general. And it's getting out of your own way. But it's not about effecting a change in your relationship status or your income bracket. It's not about that. Will that happen? Yeah, maybe. Possibly, sure. It's not the point. Changing your mind is the point. Awakening is the point and the goal. Set that as the goal and watch everything else fall into place. A special relationship of any kind is just confusion. We want to bring love and hatred together. We want to bring love and a power struggle together. We bring hatred and love together, and we attempt to keep both at once, and we wind up seeing neither. We wind up confused. And here's the deal. You can't keep both at once. We can only keep one or the other. So which is it, love? or fear, the ego, the Holy Spirit, the ego, God, dark, light, illusion, truth, death, life, 
Which is it? That, in fact, is our choice right now. So again, no one is saying that you have to eradicate and rip down the current structure of your life. That's not what spiritual teachings are saying. It's not saying your job or your career or your money is bad. It's not saying that. It's not saying that your marriage is unspiritual because it's a monogamous union of two people. That's not what is being said at all. Give it over to your inner teacher. The Holy Spirit does not deprive you of the structure of your life. Instead, he uses it for good, for very, very good. Let him, let him, and see your world transformed. You may find that you feel an abundance in, in any aspect of life, in your relationship, could be in finances, Right? It could be just in the lightness with which you relate to other people. And boom, guess what? They relate to you. They're drawn to you. Why? They recognize themselves. You know that's the way that works. And so it's very foundationally deep stuff. And this is an area, a special love relationship, where it's very important that we look at the way the ego would use it and does use it if we let it. And we don't have to let it. That's the point. Give it over to the Holy Spirit instead. In a manner of speaking, it's in different hands with our inner teacher. So that is the choice that we're invited to make. And it is the choice of happiness and joy or suffering. And we're all on the spiritual path because at some level, we're done with this game, with this round of suffering that never seems to end. Oh, but we all know that it does. And we also all know that we can give it up right now. We do know that. Doesn't mean that you're ready to accept that or not. And if you're not, that's all right. But if you are, you have profound help, profound, loving, patient, gentle guidance as part of your mind as part of our mind. It is our inner teacher. Emphasis on inner. The Holy Spirit is part of you, not an outside power. If you're concerned that in following the Holy Spirit, you're giving your power away, you most certainly are not. In fact, you're accessing it. Because in attempting to follow the ego self, you're giving your power away. Completely. So, here in the abstract, I get that it may feel like an obvious choice. Of course you want to choose the Holy Spirit, but what's going to happen when this video ends? That's the question, isn't it? You know, as a practical matter, what's going to happen when we turn this off and open up our email account? Yeah, what's going to happen when we have a business decision to make today? One that seems very, very important with pros and cons either way. You know, what about that? What are we going to do? Give it over to the Holy Spirit. Right? Spirituality is about practical application. So all of this is well and good as far as understanding or beginning to understand material such as this. It's another thing entirely to put it into practice, yet that's the important part. It's where we learn. Our experience shows us that these ideas are true. Your experience will 
show you that if you give your relationships, you give your life situations over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes, and then step aside and let him run the show, that you'll see them differently, minimally. Maybe not right away. Doesn't necessarily turn up as instantaneous. It's a habit that we form. This is a course in mind training. Make no mistake about it. If you thought it was something else, well, now you know. It's a course in mind training. Is that the hottest, sexiest thing out there in the spiritual marketplace? Probably not. There's a lot of shining retreats and shining practices of getting this in the world and getting that in the world. And you may have tried many of them. Nothing wrong with getting that stuff. And there's nothing wrong with those practices. This is a course in miracles. We're getting right to the point here, which is what we all say we want. We want to get right to the heart of the matter. Give your entire experience over to your inner teacher and watch as your inner teacher decides for God for you and see what happens. Can that be scary? Of course, the ego is always afraid. Then what would you rather have? Littleness or the peace of God? I mean, that's really the choice. So no matter how many times a video such as this presents that choice, which is often, of course, you know, it's up to each and every one of us to make that choice in the present moment when this video is, is off. And of course, you can always access it because this is YouTube and it's accessible no matter where you are, 24-7, which, by the way, is the Holy Spirit in action. Yeah, it's not dependent on anyone's physical presence at all to access the message, the voice for God, the Holy Spirit. So I, I very much thank you for tuning in. And, well... It's some deep stuff. You deserve nothing less than that. Know that and value yourself enough to know that you deserve nothing less. It's up to you as to whether you're willing to allow your inner teacher to guide you today and every day and then tomorrow and the day after that and that and that. It's up to you. It's our choice. We get, get to make this choice. So let's be glad about it. To the extent that you have questions, that is completely inevitable, isn't it? I mean, this should raise questions. You're more than welcome to ask them here in YouTube. And it's important for all of us to understand that no matter where you happen to find yourself on the spiritual path, whether you're a longtime student of this course, and many of you are, or whether you're, you're newer to it or some, somewhere in between, or whether you're a course student at all, makes no difference. People are very drawn to this thing called A Course in Miracles, and perhaps you're not even sure why. Well, maybe you got some answers in this conversation today as to why. And if not, well, keep asking the question. Your inner teacher will show you. You'll be directed to exactly what you need to do. So wherever you find yourself on this journey, we call it a journey, a walk, whatever, yeah, there is no such thing as a question that's too basic. In fact, if you have a question and you're a little hesitant, perhaps, to ask because you think it might be too basic or too fundamental, that is the best, the best question to ask. It's much like being in a classroom setting in school, we all remember that, where someone raised their hand and asked a question, and you can get a 
very quick and an immediate sigh of relief from several other students that had the same question, and they're grateful and relieved that you asked it. So these supposedly basic questions are the ones that we need the most. Experienced students, you know this to be true, because it might be the 3,475th time that you hear the exact same thing, that it, boom, connects. You may have had many such experiences of that proverbial light coming on. And what we can do with this forum, with this very powerful forum of YouTube and the internet is affect positive change and extend the miracle of love and true forgiveness to people on the other side of the world whom we're all highly unlikely ever to meet in person. You can have a major profound impact on someone's life a major profound impact on the trajectory, someone else's journey. And you could be the reason someone awakens today. We don't know that. So with that being said, I invite all questions. Now, also, if you have not yet subscribed, I'd very much love to have you do that. This is the prompt here in the corner of your screen. Just click that arrow and you'll be invited to subscribe and join us. Several videos appear each week. As you may notice, there are well over a thousand of them. They've been going on for several years and there's no reason why they won't continue to go on for several years more because there will always be something spiritually related to discuss. So... I thank you for tuning in and for joining me, and I'll see you very soon.